Welcome fellow veterans. I'm George and I'm a veteran of the Wars for Empire. I started the French and Indian War and of course I won the final battle of the American Revolution at Yorktown. Let's take a few minutes to talk about the key points of the Wars for Empire. The instructor has installed a timeline matrix that boils down all of the key points. The Wars for Empire were a power struggle between France and England. The Wars for Empire consisted of four wars fought in North America and Europe. They started in 1689 and ended in 1763. Both sides had Indian allies and tried to gain help from the other European powers. The four wars were King William's War, King George's War, Queen Anne's War, and the French and Indian, also known as the Seven Years' War. We were all Englishmen at the time, and I signed up to be part of the militia. Hey, the English called us a lesser sort, simply because, like myself, we were not men of means. I mean, during those early days, I was a surveyor, and I wasn't going to get anything from the family. My older brother was going to inherit the farm, so I had to work, and the militia was a great way to advance. Now that lesser sort, those militia men, we sometimes called them train bands, were actually pretty good at defending their homes from attack by the Indians or other outside forces. But you know, we had home field advantage, and if we lost, the enemy would have killed us and taken our children and wives. So I guess you had to say we were motivated. The bad part was when the English wanted us to take militia units and fight far from home. We did not like that much. And after all, we were not trained to organize military units. When we had to send militia units off on far-flung expeditions, we generally sent the folks that were of least value to the town. The second-born sons, like myself, as we would not inherit any wealth. We'd send the drunks, the laggards, etc. Of course, the well-to-do and the politicians never had to take part in the fighting. Those first two wars for empire were not much account except that we did get the colony of Georgia out of the deal. Georgia was put in place as a military buffer against the Spanish in Florida and those evil Indian tribes like the Creeks that were down in the south. The old brown best musket that the British gave us as militiamen was a heavy black powder weapon. It was a smooth bore and accuracy was horrible. If you aimed at a man-sized target at 100 yards, you would get a hit, one hit, out of about 300 shots. That is why we just lined up the boys shoulder to shoulder and volley fired in battle. Teaching marksmanship was a waste of time. The best tactic was to fire fast. The more shots, the greater the chance of getting a hit. If two sides were equal in strength, the side that could shoot the fastest always won. It was simple math. If you could fire three shots a minute while the enemy could only fire one or two, you would always win. We also had the bayonet, but it was not really used that much in actual hand-to-hand -hand combat. Most bayonet charges resulted in one side running away anyway. King George's War, though, caused a number of us to start thinking that maybe we were Americans instead of Englishmen. We sent some militia off to South America, and about 2,000 of them never came back. So much for those far-flung battles. We did, however, manage to capture Fort Lewisburg on Cape Britain Island. That fort controlled the St. Lawrence Seaway and essentially would have given us control of Canada. The English king, though, signed a treaty with the French when the war ended, and he traded the fort for the city of Madres in India. Madres was worth more in economic gain than all of Canada, so it was a good thing for the English. But for us Americans, it was a bad deal. We wanted the French enemy out of our backyard. So after the trade of Fort Lewisburg for Madres, we sort of saw ourselves as more American than English. It's like what John Adams once said, the revolution is a state of mind. That revolutionary state of mind had its seeds in the aftermath of King George's War. Well, like I said earlier, I was trying to make my way in the world by serving in the militia and the British sent me out to Fort Duquesne to tell the French to get out of the area. That was at the point of the three rivers. Today the Steelers football team plays in that area, Pittsburgh. Things did not go as well as planned. 
I ended up attacking the fort, and some Indians that were with me took the opportunity to kill off most of the French garrison. The French labeled me a war criminal for that little action. I did not get to keep the fort long. I built my own fort, Fort Necessity, but lost it to the French. My actions at Fort Duquesne started the French and Indian War, or Seven Years' War. It lasted five years in North America and seven years in Europe. The war did not go well the first few years. General Braddock got clobbered in the forest, and the French had the better of things. But then General Wolfe showed up on the St. Lawrence. He went to Quebec. The French failed to provide security to a path leading from the river up to the city. So Wolfe was able to move his army into attack position. Wolfe understood mass. His troops could fire those brown best muskets faster than the French. Plus his men were trained to fight with a bayonet in formation. I guess the poor French security and the British mass capped that victory. The taking of Quebec won the war for the British. Poor General Wolfe, though, was killed in battle along with the French general. One of the many treaties of Paris ended the French and Indian War. It sure changed the map. Everything west of the Mississippi went to Spain. Spain gave Florida to England, and England got everything east of the Mississippi, including Canada. The French got kicked off the North American mainland, but they did get to keep some fishing islands off the coast and territory in the Caribbean. The colonists were happy about the end of the war. The French enemy was gone, and we could expand westward. At least that is what we thought. But the English threw a wrench in that westward movement plan with their proclamation line. That set the wheels in motion for the American Revolution. Now you know all about the militia and the wars for empire. Have a nice evening.